Now, if we do a training video rather than a scripted video, let me raise this a little bit. The good thing is it's generally more interesting for everybody, really, because when the animal's not just doing a rote thing that they know by cue or by order of, you know, how the show goes, they're more likely to be engaged. They're thinking. They may be learning, hopefully, right? They're interacting with us. They're figuring out. They're negotiating with the trainers. They're letting us know what they think about that behavior. And so we get to share that with their audience. And we get to enrich the visitor's experience. I remember at the National Zoo, we had so much training to do. We were so engaged with training for veterinary behaviors and research behaviors and just all kinds of behaviors. And so I couldn't just do demos or shows. I had to make training my demo. So let's talk about the great parts of it. It's always different. It's always interesting. It gives your uh, the people that love your animals and your institution a reason to come back every day, which is a great thing. And they get to see the actual personality of the animal. They get to be assigned to an animal to be part of their cheering squad. I would share with them what the requirements were for a particular behavior, whatever you know, training step we were on. And I would tell them things like, look, these dolphins are going to try to take you away from me. So this ought to be a mutual thing. But with dolphins, it can be a war. And you are all on my side. Do you all swear you're on my side? Okay, that's good. You can stay. All of you guys, you have to go. And if you're on my side, here's what we're doing, troops. This animal needs to go up and touch this high jump with their flukes. And they're already really good at doing it with their rostrum but they need to learn how to do it with their fleet flukes. Did I say they need to learn? Yes, they need to learn. Why? I don't know, but it's an imperative. So they don't think they need to learn. It's up to you to convince them. To convince them, you have to be as excited about that behavior as we want them to be. Okay, so let's practice, let's practice, and you gotta have your wits about you because they're gonna try you. Okay, are you ready? All right, so here's the high jump. The animal comes up. They've got to flip their flukes up and touch this thing, right? And when are you going to bridge? You ready? Good, 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 Okay, so you got to watch for if it gets close enough. And this time, let's say that animal had already done this, then you were right not to bridge. Okay, this time he's going to do it right. Get ready. Good, 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 good. But what are you going to say besides good? Good, 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 good. Woo! Okay, then you're going to get really excited because that animal had a breakthrough. And we're going to celebrate that breakthrough with our colleague, this hardworking animal. Are you ready? And so we would go. Similarly, I might say, ooh, be careful because this guy is a known criminal and he might go up and instead of touching it himself, wait for so-and-so to touch it and then try to scare them out of their fish. And we don't want to back that up. So if he does that, do not laugh. Do not clap. Just turn your back. And you see that person over there? They're our scout. And they're going to tell you and me, because I'm going to turn my back too, whether or not we can turn back toward that animal and can continue the training demonstration but we're a unified force right good let's do it ah! etc okay now what about the disadvantages well <laughs> some days it's dolphins 10 Trainer zero. There are days where everybody just wants to be on vacation for one reason or another. 
that's not very often but every once in a while it happens that's tough especially if our egos are on the line if we came into work that day thinking oh yeah oh yeah i'm so good i'm so cool i'm a wild animal trainer i am the superior being did you hear that i am the superior being would you please repeat that with me okay now the problem is sarah and i've been working together for about 30 years and she knows all about me she knows how superior i am and am not you can see she looks incredibly impressed even just with the opportunity to be with me but you know what as cool as she plays it right here this 31 year old girl when i went out to call her i just got the most beautiful video of her galloping straight to me yes it's what i live for so that's not always what she's going to show other people and sometimes that's a little tough you know we have to develop our skill and grace at taking our audience through those situations with us and you know what it's totally relevant for them because guess what they have children they have spouses they have co-workers they will learn from your good example and it will enrich their life not just enrich it because they enjoy watching it they watch the game of it but also because you're showing them ways to be ways to escape our ego ways to escape our negativity ways to escape our perfectionism and we all need help doing that okay so that's a downside but also a good side oh one of the things is if you're doing something at any point predictable then you have to figure out how to pre Zend it, or even if it's not predictable, if the animal just decides not to do it, you not only have to figure out the strategy of what you're going to, you know, negotiate with the animal or allow the animal or how you're going to try to get the training system back on track, but you also have to figure out what to tell people. You know, and, and you don't want to look lame. You don't want to say, oh, well, she always does this. Well, it's probably true. She probably does always do that. But when she's not doing it, that's not a very helpful thing to say. So you need to think about that ahead of time. You have to be on your feet more. You got to be on your game. Because you can't just go out there and go, la, 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 la. Because it's not going to happen that way. You are in process all the time. Let me see if there's any other... Uh, well, it can get interrupted. People can do something unexpected, like drop their kid in the water, drop their keys in the water, something like that, and you have to stop everything and, and go help. But that can happen no matter what kind of show you're doing. Okay, so the big things are, it takes more from you as a presenter and as a trainer and as a person that has somehow risen beyond your ego. It... Uh, requires the animal to really be engaged and sometimes they're not you have to get ahead of the whole situation as far as um, the dynamics with the audience so those are the downsides but I'll tell you what it is so much fun and the animals really reveal themselves and the people love that and they love the animals and you're accomplishing your mission of presenting these ambassadors, these people of other nations, to humans to allow them to develop a real appreciation and a care for these animals and these other animals and these other animals that you present. And hopefully they're then going to develop a care for what happens to them in the wild and what happens to their habitats and what happens to our environment and our ecology and that's what at least that's what i'm here for all right so really consider training demonstrations instead of straight demonstrations straight demonstrations can be hysterical they can be interesting they can be very professional but they can also be very boring mind-numbing and 
destroy your relationship to an extent. All right, are we with this to, on this together? I thought so. Let's go.